Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, my name is Alex Highgate, and I'm also one of the fellows here at um, Allegro. So, one question you can ask yourself is why do we want to simulate proposed observations? Uh, so, one is for uh, determining the feasibility of your proposal. Um, simulations can be used to assure yourself that you're actually going to see something after you observe. Uh, it allows you to easily investigate a number of different observing configurations and compare what output you might uh, get from the telescope. And it will can also contribute to improving your proposal quality. If you can uh, include uh, simulations of your proposal, it goes a long way to justifying to the TAC uh, the feasibility of your observations. So what do you need to simulate some observations? The first things that you need are basic source properties. So you need to have uh, a measurement or an estimate of the flux of the source and know its sky position. And these obviously just stay the same. The source is what it is. You need a source model. So this is some reasonable approximation of the source's flux distribution. And this could be an image of the um, of the source in a different band, for example, at the resolution or exceeding the resolution that you're at, that, that you want to get out to with your uh, observations. Or it could be some simulated model that you've chosen um, appropriately. And then you need to know something about your observing setup. So what desired resolution uh, do you need? What is your observing frequency? So for example, what's the center of your line? Um, and then the desired sensitivity that you uh, want. And these will be driven obviously by your science case. Then you can enter these into the observing tool and this will give you the observing time that you'll require and the atmospheric uh, precipitable water vapor. What water vapor. Um, and obviously you can use your simulations to inform these and iterate on these values until you get to some values that you're happy with. So there are three different op uh, options for simulating observations. These are the observation support tool, which is a website interface, SimAlma, which is one single CASA task that takes the whole process end to end, and then the third op uh, option, which is SimObserve and SimAnalyze, which are two uh, CASA tasks. And so these go in order of most control and also inversely greater ease of use. So the website is in general the easiest to use, but gives you the least amount of control. Whereas for full control, you can use Sim Observe and Sim Analyze, um, but these are going to require more effort on your behalf to simulate. So the first tool I'm going to look at is the observation support tool. As I said, it's a web tool, and here's the website where you can find it. It has the advantage that it's easy to use, has minimal computing requirements from your behalf. Any computer with a web browser can use it. Um, it's even supposedly works on a tablet or a, a phone, but I've never tried it myself. Um, obviously it does require internet access and you're reliant on the website's availability. So if it goes down, you can't simulate and there's a queue. Um, so obviously if you have your own computer and you're simulating, you can use the resources you wish. Um, but here there's uh, one computer that's being, your one computing service that's being used by everyone. And so you need to wait. And this is something to bear in mind as you come closer to the proposal deadline is that more and more people may be using it. So the earlier you get in with your, with your uh, requests, the better it will be. Uh, so now I'm just going to stop sharing and switch to the website. Uh, and I can show you how simple it is to uh, submit a request. Okay, so now you should be able to see this website uh, and you can see that you get a, a, a basically a form that you can submit here with different options. So the first uh, key thing to, to look at is the instrument. You can either choose um, a specific configuration that you're interested in. So say you're interested in configuration five and you want to simulate that, or you can just say that you want to use Alma 
or the ACA or Alma and the ACA, and the tool will select the appropriate configuration for you based on the resolution that you ask for. Now, one uh, useful feature of the observation support tool is that there's a library of, um, of uh, example sources, which makes it super easy to, to get going with simulations. And so you can either choose one of these uh, library of models or upload your own fits image, which will obviously give you better control over your model and will be more appropriate for your particular observation. Then you just need to enter the declination of your source, so where it is in the sky, and the image peak point flux. And so some of these um, <clears throat> quantities can be a bit confusing. What is image peak uh, or point flux, for example? But there's very good help doc documentation. So if you go to help here, uh, you can find, for example, the definition of the image peak point flux. And you can see there's an equation here that would let you calculate this from uh, whatever measurement you had of the flux. Um, and then so if you've done this, you just enter it in here. Uh, and I should say that in general, there's comprehensive help for all of these different options if you get confused. Um, then you need to select your observing mode. So here, for example, I want to observe a spectral line, but you could choose continuum. Then you need to know the frequency of your line and you can choose some appropriate bandwidth. Um, decide whether you want Stokes parameters. Um, the default here is no, and then just to select two polarizations. If you want to do something more fancy, then obviously you can change this. Uh, then you want your required resolution in arc seconds, and then you can have a, a pointing strategy here. So single is obviously just one pointing. You can also select a mosaic if you have a large source and you want to cover it with many pointings, or you can upload a user pointing file. And then you set your um, source time. And so when you're getting this value from the observing tool, uh, this is not the time including uh, overheads. This is just the on-source time uh, in hours that you're uh, looking to observe. Uh, and then you can choose the number of visits. So if you have a very long observation, it's advantageous to you to break it up into a number of visits because uh, you will be observing transits. And as the source transits more and more, the observing conditions are less advantageous. Then you need to select the PWV that corresponds to the uh, observing tool selected value. This is selected automatically by the observing tool based on your frequency setup. So if you want to simulate your observations best, you should pick the one uh, that it selects for you. And you can choose uh, the weighting uh, of your image here in terms of cleaning. So this is uh, this determines how the observations would be uh, turned into a, an observed image. So you can choose basically uniform as maximum resolution, natural as maximum uh, maximum sensitivity, and Briggs is a compromise between the two. Uh, and you can just decide whether you actually want to clean or whether you just want to make uh, an image without cleaning, uh, just to return the dirty image. Uh, and then you can choose your output format. So you can choose the uh, FITS file format, which is obviously very convenient and portable, or you can choose the CASA uh, format. Even if you do choose the CASA format, you can uh, export it later to FITS in CASA. Then you must provide your email address because you'll be given information about your simulations there. And then you hit submit and you're done. Uh, and then your result will appear at this, this website and you're told, yeah, so in this case, there are six jobs in front of it and then you need to wait. Um, if I go back to my presentation. And when the simulation finishes, you'll get a, a nice web page that shows you your outputs, and it will summarize for you the uh, inputs that you chose, um, which can be useful for your reminding yourself. 
But most importantly, you'll get a number of outputs that you can download. So you can get um, here the simulated image and download it in this case as a FITS file. Um, and then some other information that summarizes for you, for example, the dirty beam, coverage in the UV plane, and so on and so forth. And then you can uh, use these simulations to inform your uh, proposal uh, as to whether you think it's, it's feasible or not. And then, however, if you want some more control or just to simulate it uh, on your own computer, then you can simulate within CASA. So for this, you'll need to download uh, a tar file of our configuration files, and you can find them at this uh, website. And you have two choices within CASA. You can use SimAlma, which is one command that will call SimObserve and SimAnalyze for you. This has some limitations, but it's the most straightforward as an individual user. And if you want maximum control, you can use SimObserve and SimAnalyze. Um, but it will take a little bit more effort on your behalf to do this. So here's an example uh, command in SimAlma. So here I just give a project name. In this case, I provide a model. Uh, in this case, it's uh, yeah, just a FITS file. And then I can set the brightness of the uh, image here towards the source, uh, using the source brightness if I haven't already scaled my model. And I can change the direction here without needing to edit the FITS file directly. It's also important that you set the center where you're expecting to observe either your line or the center of your continuum bandwidth, um, because this will make a big difference in terms of uh, how the simulations go in terms of which band you're observing in. Then you need to set a channel width. So for example, in this case, a sensible channel width for a line may, for example, be 10 megahertz. And then provide it one of these antenna lists or a list of antenna lists that you downloaded from this uh, website. And so in this example, I want to use the um, cycle eight, uh, eight configuration, as it were. Uh, in general, for our angle, the simplest is just to choose transit. So your source will transit over uh, rather than being at a particular hour angle offset, but you can control this if you want to. Then set uh, a total time of observation. And this again will come out of the observing tool. And this is the on source time again, and not the time including overheads. Then you select the precipitable water vapor. And this is again, uh, come straight out of the OT when you uh, input your desired uh, spectral setup. And then you can control um, T-clean. So in this example, I've set um, zero clean iterations, but you can choose more. Uh, one very important thing to note is that if you set don't set dry run equals to false, SimAlma will um, do a number of calculations and output nothing for you. So if you want to actually simulate, you should always choose dry run equals false. And you get a number of different output files. So some of the key ones here are the measurement set. And this will have the name project.alma dot the name of your configuration file dot ms. Um, and you can use this like a normal measurement set so you can clean it. For example, if you're not happy with the cleaning parameters that you chose in SimAlma, you could just use tclean to, to clean it in a different manner. And then uh, you'll get your image, which has a similar name, but .image instead. Uh, and this is a CASA image file. And you can easily export this to a FITS file within CASA and then make figures, for example, for your proposal from this. And a number of useful pre-prepared PNG files uh, which will tell you about your observations. So this uh, will just show you the, for example, uh, transit and elevation of your uh, observations, the antenna um, configuration, the UV coverage, and your PSF. And then here is a summary of the observations. And so you can see, again, the PSF, you can see your model, the image, and residuals and fidelity that you can use to upset, uh, assess the quality of your observations. 
Now, finally, if you um, want, again, to control maximally your, um, your simulations, you can use SimObserve in conjunction with Sim Analyze, and this allows you to set many of the particular um, individual settings. So for example, OBS mode here is set to int for inter interferometry mode, but you could simulate single dish, for example. And the thermal noise here, I've chosen to use the atmospheric model, uh, but I could customize this and choose my own model of thermal noise if I wanted to. And there are many different parameters that you can choose. And if you go to these do documentations here, um, that I've linked, you can see all the many different things you can customize. But many of the, the default and important things here are um, the same as in Simelva. And then when you come to uh, wanting to analyze an image, your uh, output from SimObserve, you need to use SimAnalyze. There are a couple of key things to note here is that the project keyword must be the same one you used in SimObserve. And the visibility project name will be the visibility name here. So the MS file that you're telling SimAnalyze to clean will be the project name plus dot Alma when you're simulating Alma plus the antenna configuration file name plus dot MS. So in this example, my project dot Alma dot cycle eight dot eight. So the eighth configuration file from cycle8.ms. Um, and you can again customize uh, lots of different uh, parameters in SimAnalyze, for example, the uh, those relating to tclean, such as the number of iterations and threshold. Um, and again, I've linked here all the different uh, information for you to see these different things you can customize. And then finally, here's a list of different resources if you want to look um, more into these simulations. So there's the observing support tool and the help pages and the various CASA documentations that I've linked throughout this presentation, as well as a useful CASA guide that will guide you through uh, simulating an example uh, observation in CASA. And I'd finally conclude by saying that Allegro maintains a number of CASA installations on our computers, which can be used for simulations. And we're of course always uh, available for help uh, or questions you may have uh, about simulating your proposed ALMA observations. And you can contact us at alma at strw.nl with these questions. Thank you very much. And I'll, I'll take uh, any questions.